in the sea battle between sharks and boats. The sharks appear to target one area. Oh, God. The shark was definitely most interested in the motors more than anything. It would come under the water and grab the bottom of the propellers. No way. You could hear a, loud, a large thumping sound and then a scrape as its teeth hit the, hit the motors and props themselves. So I thought, either we're going to lose an engine or we're going to have to paddle ourselves home. Oh, God. This isn't a case of missing a chump on a chum bag. These sharks are going out of their way to gnaw on the metal engine and props. We saw that we could get these lemon sharks up to the boat just from the sound of the engine, but there are plenty of videos online of sharks biting engines, and that's not about the sound. There's a lot more going on, especially the creation of electric fields, and sharks have an incredible electroreception sense. It's kind of their superpower. All living things create an electrical charge. A human heartbeat is regulated by electrical charges that signal muscles to contract and release. An EKG reads those charges. Fish also create electrical signals, signals that sharks can detect. These boat engines are sending out these electrical signals, and sharks have what are called ampullae of Lorenzini, which are these little tiny pores around their snout and particularly around their mouth area. These allow them to detect electrical signals in the water, which is super helpful when you're trying to get fish or any sort of animal that's moving in the water. But it can also lead to confusion when you're around man-made objects that also emit electrical signals. It's called electroreceptivity. And some sharks, like the great white, are so adept at it, they can perceive as little as one millionth of a volt in the water. That's a tiny fraction of what a common AA battery generates. Sarah has constructed a test to reveal how effectively sharks can detect electrical charges, like those created by a boat engine. What we have here is we have two circuit boards. Both of them are powered by batteries in the Pelican case, and they both emit a current of about 20 milliamps. And once we close the Pelican cases, we actually have these switches on the outside to help us easily turn it off and on and do any alterations we need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place both of these circuits in the water, but one's gonna be on and the other one's gonna be off. This will enable us to observe the sharks and see how they react and how they respond to the circuit that's emitting an electrical field compared to the one that's not emitting an electrical field. Sarah's test should capture a shark's interest. One last check. The one with the arm up has its power on, right? Yeah, so once they're both in the water, I'm just gonna swim over and I'm gonna put that arm down so that way it's on and running. Okay, but otherwise you've got them exactly identical. The only difference is this one's got current going through it. Absolutely, and the one that is on, I actually already covered the light bulb up so we know that light's not gonna play a factor in the shark's behavior. Awesome, so yeah, this will be a good test to see if they're queuing in on electric fields rather than something floating in the water. For sure. And then we're just going to tie them off the side of the boat, 20 feet of line each, and see what happens. My expectation is we're going to have a good number of lemon sharks. This is where they hang out. But we might see bull sharks in Pittas, Florida, so you never know what might show up.